High temperature is supposed to get to 82. Wind will be a southeast at three o'clock. It should get up to seven, six o'clock, about eight miles an hour. So it's gonna be a light southeast wind. We always burn these units with a south wind because directly to the south of us, we do have Route 32. This wind will stay south all night tonight and all day tomorrow and into uh, tomorrow night. So there shouldn't be any smoke issues with that. We're gonna use the same uh, cruise teams that we have in the past. Tyler will have the Orion folks uh, and then Chuck will be running the Moody, the Moody folks. Keep us as a family unit to the degree that we can. Try to keep, uh, um, just be aware of the pandemic issues and try to keep your social distancing. Don't want anybody getting sick. The, the goal right now, so you've got it right. We started up here at Alpha. Down here, we have moved to pretty close to Echo, down at the southern corner. Eventually, we're going to get to Echo and turn the corner. With that predicted south wind, what that's gonna do is change our backing and flanking fire coming in from the edges and down from the top into a head fire. Head fire, as a rule, is larger and potentially more destructive. Uh, so because our goals are not to kill trees, but rather to slowly reduce underbrush and allow for regeneration of species that are fire tolerant, we don't want to use head fire as the primary tool of carrying fire across this unit. So we're going to go, we're basically moderating the fire intensity by using backing fire as much as possible by working slowly from the edges and backing slowly into the wind. This also means that the fire doesn't have much room to get up and run because we're removing fuel from in front of it as we light it. So even though there is a little bit of head fire, it hits you know, consumed fuels pretty quickly and drops right back down. In the meantime, the backing fire continues to progress. The backing fire, unlike head fire, which is you know, big in severity and moves really quickly, backing fire moves slowly. It's still very hot, but it has much more time to destroy, say, the woody tissue of this understory uh, species that we are not as keen on keeping as a forest component. Um, so yeah, we will eventually have to turn that corner, but we're going to hold off doing that as long as we can. Of course, the other side of it is, is that as the RHs drop, fire is going to get more severe no matter what we do. So we have to balance the timetable with our desire to do this low and slow.
So as far as the ecological benefits of fire are concerned, in units like this, where we are currently restoring the native uh, understory, fire does a great deal of work removing hardwoody, viney uh, sort of things that clot up the understory. What we would really like in Georgia, in this sort of forest, would be an understory that has a larger grass and forb component. Unfortunately, when there are these shrubby layers of small trees and, and bushes uh, taking over space, they compete very effectively for both light and nutrients. Um, by removing them through the use of fire, um, because they are not particularly fire tolerant, we're able to give grasses and forbs a chance to establish themselves. Once those things, once those species, specifically things like wire grass, are able to establish, they're very hard to remove, and they respond really well to fire. Once in this unit there's a larger grass response to fire, it'll be easier and easier to keep it that way, assuming we continue to add fire to the ecosystem. Thank you.